Hello and welcome to the self-help segment. I'm your host Keith Weissight, licensed clinical social worker. And I can tell you that there are some people that are out in the community making a difference. There's a lot of people that we see, but there are people on the ground making a difference every day. I'm always glad to have my friend and one of my mentors, Pastor Steve here with us. Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, good to be with you. I appreciate it. You know, one of the things that we keep asking people, it's just a normal question, is uh, how are you doing? And for when we ask you that question, we ask how are you doing, how's your family doing, and how's your congregation doing? You and your people is something that we certainly care about. Give us a little bit of an update, if you don't mind, about where you guys are in your recovery. Uh, we're, we're about like everybody else, I guess, you yeah. know. Uh, you get up every morning, you put one foot before the other one, and you make the day happen. I think a lot of people are a little bit numb, mm-hmm. and um, they're just getting up and doing life, and that's probably where we are. Um, we're blessed. I had very minor damage. Church had very minor damage. Some of my kids had major damage, and so we've been focusing on that, getting mm-hmm. them gutted and Right. beginning to build back. We're already building back on both of their houses. So very thankful for that. Uh, one of them's actually within a few weeks of completion. But, oh my goodness. That's well, wonderful. he's got his daddy's personality. He's just, you know, he just <laughs> that ju- get it done, get kind, of it thing. done <laughs> kind of thing. And so he jumped out there and got on it. Right. And uh, the other one is probably a little smarter. He's waiting on the insurance people and the contractors to do the work. Right. And so, uh, but they're both making progress. We're, we're thankful for that. Uh, church is doing uh, as well, I think, as church can do right now. Okay. Uh, people are showing up for worship. I've been amazed at the attendance. Um, but you can tell people people are not in a normal state of mind. Right. And uh, so we're just trying to love on them, minister to them where they are right now. And, and so the value of your history, the value of your education really comes into play here as somebody who understands and, and as Dr. Steve Fulmer, that's where it's so very important when we help people kind of weather the storm. You mentioned something that's therapeutic that not a lot of people realize. You got to start where people are. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I reminded my ministry team this last week, um, people are under a ton of stress and many of them, they don't even realize they're under that stress. And it comes out in a moment. Mm -hmm. Somebody pushes a button Mm -hmm. that they didn't even know they had. And so I've encouraged my ministry team, give people grace, you know, Mm -hmm. give them a little room. Sometimes they just need to blow up for a second or two. Right. It's okay. Right. You know, we're not sure what those triggers are. That's right. That's and, right. You know, for, you know, it's really interesting because you talk about how those happen. For me, my trigger was I was with my little sister the day after. Now, the day after the storm is historical in my life because my birthday's on August 30th, and I get that I know for my birthday we're going to either be traveling or having a storm. And it happens a little bit too often, but you have an August 30th birthday. It's one of those things that will happen. But I had my moment when I was with my little sister who has been one of the, the most consistent support people in my life. And I just had my moment. Mm-hmm. And it's important to let people have those moments. That's right. And, and, That's right. and, and do two things, like you said. <clears throat> be graceful, be gracious, and be supportive and loving. Yeah, you, people need to know you're not a horrible person if you have a meltdown once in a while. And um, I, I don't know of too many things in life uh, that can cause the kind of stress that our community's under. Right now, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we've already been under these COVID issues for almost two years now, that was enough stress in and of itself. And sure. then you add this on top of it, it's, it's almost a little more than a lot of people can bear. Yeah, you know? they're kind of, they almost feel like they're at their breaking point. Yes. A bit. And it's okay to feel broken. Yes, absolutely. It, and, and that's when that's when support matters a great deal. And and when we turn to ministry teams, we turn to the support that we have in our faith. Yeah. And that's how that helps. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I, I told our people the first Sunday we were back after the storm, uh, there's a question we all need to answer. And it's a simple question. Why did this storm happen? And one option is we live on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> it's where we are. Storms come ashore on the coast. So 
One of the questions you'll often get is, why would God do this to us? Well, if you build your house in California where there's a major fault line, her, uh, her earthquakes. earthquakes are gonna happen. Yep. And if you build on the coast, hurricanes are gonna happen. So uh, it, it's easy to hunt a fall guy. And usually that's God. We wanna blame him for it. Mm -hmm. When in fact, hurricanes were coming ashore long before we were here. Right. Uh, and so you, you have to discipline yourself not to go down that road of hunting something to blame or someone to blame. It, it, it is what it is. And so you're only gonna get through it by focusing on what do I do from here. Yeah. And so don't, don't get caught up in coulda, shoulda, woulda, uh, but how, how am I gonna get to where I wanna be from this point in time? Yeah, and, and I believe that the way to be able to do that is to go to back to your base, go back yes. to what your basis is, yes. you know, get rid of all the fluff, go back to the base. And for a lot of people, if that base is set in scripture, Yes. Like I hear my friends say all the time, scripture will give you the answer. Yes. You know, I, one of those things that I have always known, but it gets reinforced to me each week, and certainly every time I get to watch you, turn to scripture. Mm, the, yes. The, the answers are there. Yes. E even the answers we don't <clears throat> want to hear are there. That's right. But turn to scripture, and it will never, ever lead you astray. It will comfort you. That's right. And so some of those things that I think people need to hear during our challenging times is the Bible addresses that. It lets yes. us know how we recover. Yes, that's right. Well, for an example, Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Um, the reality is <clears throat> trouble comes in this world we live. It, it comes real. in many forms. And God doesn't promise us as his children that there'll never be trouble, but he does promise to be our refuge in that trouble. So what does that mean? If we draw on him, his strength, then we can get through it. Um, he can provide for us energy we don't have, uh, well-being we don't have, presence of mind we don't have, comfort that we don't have, uh, and, and my favorite, contentment that we may not have when we have these troubles come into our lives, but he can provide those things for us and, and get us through those rough patches. And so I would encourage everyone right now to deliberately spend time in meditation and prayer and just asking the Lord to give them what they need to get them through. And, and I think part of that, one of the things that I've been challenged to do, and I've been doing it for over a year now, is to be thankful and gracious for five things every yeah. day. Yeah. And it, it has now become part of my morning prayer mm -hmm. because it reminds me that through all these struggles that my God is present. Yes. He's yes. there. All I have to do is call upon him. Yes. He is there. I just have to be there. Yeah. He's So that greatest gift, that's what we tell people in their most difficult times during cancer, during dementia, uh, during illness, during sickness, during COVID. Yes. Gift of presence. Yes. Somebody being presence. there for us. <clears throat> and I, I got to tell you, Keith, <clears throat> I have been so impressed with our parish because normally after a catastrophe, all you hear is negative. I have seen and heard very little negative. I mean, this community is by and large a community of faith. Yes, sir. And you can, you can tell the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll hear our people say, it doesn't matter what church they go to, you hear it everywhere. Um, boy, my house is gone, but, but we're all alive, we're safe, thank God we're good. And, and that may sound like a cliche, but it's really not. What they're doing in that little statement in that moment is thanking God for the most important thing, right. human life. Yeah. You know, uh, we are the pinnacle of God's creation. And we're reminded in a moment like this that stuff is stuff, you know. But so many of the people in our parish seem to already understand that. Mm -hmm. They really do. Yeah. And I, it's just been such a blessing to watch the response mm -hmm. of our people. And the appreciation of the people that are doing things. Yes. 
our yeah. church communities, and I mean that in yeah. whole, yeah. have stepped up absolutely, and have said, let's take care of our people. It's been Let, amazing. Let's shepherd the flock. It's been amazing. And so we know, and we, we turn to Isaiah as well, and that's just one of those that's just always reminded me that, that men stumble and fall, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. That's right. We trust in the Lord, we get strength. We will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not faint. Yeah. It will, it will carry us through. Even when we have those moments, like we talked about last segment, even when we have those moments of feeling broken, we can still soar like an eagle. That's right. That's right. And there's real pictures of that. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> we had on average way over 50 volunteers a day the first three weeks after the storm. Okay. Wow. Uh, I watched Bayou Blue Assembly. Same thing. Uh, I watched Andre over at uh, St. Bernadette. Yeah, right. Same thing. Okay. So these are people who have their own houses destroyed. People who've got problems just like everybody else. And they're getting up every day and handing out food and water and cooking meals and loving on other people. Where did they find the strength and the will to do that? It was that faith core that they have, that they know <clears throat> this is not the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, that the Lord has this, he's in charge, it's gonna be okay and I need to go help somebody. Right, I need yeah. to go do something good for somebody else. That's the right. The greatest way for us to handle our own issues is to go and do for others. Yes. Which is what yes. we're called to do. A couple other of those places, two of these churches that got a lot of damage, First United Methodist Church yeah. doing jambalaya, um, fed my brother who came in from Dallas just to help with the recovery. Yeah. Uh, Annunciata Church, a lot of damage yeah. uh, with, with meals and just take this take this. We, you, you need this. You're going to need this later. How many do you need? How many people can you help? Uh, I, I got to go to my father's house on the east side with my brother, and we were able to bring food to the next door neighbor who yeah. had been in heat yeah. for three weeks. Yeah. You know, that's the resiliency about being able to carry on. You know, it's one of those things where we need, uh, we've done a couple of different things. We're aware of the reality and Sometimes that overwhelms us. Sometimes we need a moment. We're aware that if we go and turn to the Lord and turn to Scripture, we will find some, um, some feeling of sense of calm. Yes. But we also need to look forward to some hope. Yes. And we get that in Scripture as well. Yeah. Yeah, Psalm 71, 5 says, For you, O Lord, are my hope. And uh, it's a time like this where we really take stock in what we believe and what we think is truth. And, um, uh, you know, we tend to turn to the Lord. I remember after 9-11, church attendance all over the country soared, you know, and in time it fell back. Right. But anytime we're looking for hope, uh, we, we, ironically, all of a sudden, God's important to us. And uh, we need to know that He literally is our hope. Uh, what does that mean, that He's our hope? He's our future. He's what we can trust. He's what will give us what we need to get through all of this, to rebuild our parish, to uh, help our neighbors, to have the, uh, the energy and the willingness to do the things we got to do. Yeah, and, and that's, that's His presence is our hope. That's right. That's right. And, and so if there's anything that people hear today is that they need to know that his presence is our hope. Exactly. And we can help be that. Yes. That's been the value of our community support. Yes. It's been the value of what this community has come together. And people from other communities coming in to give hope and say, we care about you. Yes. We care about you getting what you need. We want to help give you the bare essentials because it's those things that help give you hope. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Jeremiah 17, 7 said, blesses the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Yes. Yes. And again, it's just, it's one of those things that we need to realize. We need to be aware of his faith in us. And if we have faith in him, we have hope in the future. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, it's an admission that we're here with a purpose. Uh, to say that the Lord is my hope, that I have hope in the future, that his presence is my hope, is acknowledging uh, that he is creator, that he is in charge and that he put me here with a purpose. Um, and you've heard it said, and I believe in it, 
uh, you know, when you leave this world, you want to leave it a little better than you found it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we understand we're here with hope and a purpose, we're not selfish. We're not out for taking care of number one. We're out for taking care of our neighbors, uh, those around us that are hurting. And, uh, you know, that, that's what it means that he's our hope. It, it helps us to live our life in a very positive and directional way. And, and, and really important, directional. Yeah. And we can only move forward if we get ourselves out of the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we look at the focus of helping others. Yeah. D directional is a really, really important point. Yes. Uh, because you want to be moving forward. Sometimes you got to fall flat on your face to move forward. And I don't know that people always realize that. Sometimes these kinds of situations, listen, I can tell you I would never empty out all of the closets in my home at one time if they weren't sitting in a pod in my driveway while my house is gutted. <laughs> yeah. I would not. God said, Keith, you've been wanting to do this. You've been praying about less clutter in your life. Here's your opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And so I shall. Yeah. Uh, and so that gives me the opportunity. Uh, Romans 15, 13, one last, one last scripture. Now the God of hope fill you, fill with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's right. We can have hope and we can have joy and peace if we do. They go together. Yes. Yes. And I think people, that's the one thing I think people pray for more, more often than anything, joy and peace. Yes. When, when you have a relationship with a living God, uh, you can have hope and joy and peace, whether your house is all together or whether it's demolished. And that's what that means. Um, you know that your value and your existence on planet Earth and even your eternal destination is not rooted in this moment. It, it, it's... It's a tough moment. It's a tough time. And, and God promises to help us through those times. Okay. Uh, you know, the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That, that includes getting through a hurricane. You know, that includes everything in your life that as a believer, you battle mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And so if we depend on his hope, his strength, we'll be fine. And we need that hope and that strength as we deal with insurance. Oh, yes. And, you know, yes. as, as we finish up here, we could probably too do a whole yeah. segment, probably do a whole show on what that means to have faith and, and believability in things being okay because we have those challenges yeah. like dealing with insurance. We just need to be aware of it. It's like the awareness that, that our, our community has been, has been broken. Yes. And it's okay yes. because we can recover. We just need to be aware of that. We know that insurance is going to be a battle. Just know that on the front end. Yeah. Just don't assume that you're going to have it easy when it comes to that recovery. Right. But know that you have hope. Yes. And if you trust in the Lord. Yes. Uh, Brother Steve, I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, how you inspire others. And, and you do it more, way more often than you know. But it's because of that presence that you talk about. Yeah. It's talk about it's about the fact that you help people understand about being in the word and living out the word. And that gives people hope. Thank you. And we appreciate that. Yes. And I just want to say again how proud I am to be a part of our parish. Came here nearly 23 years ago. This has become home. And um, so I see these people as my people. And uh, I'm just so proud of the response of our parish. Yeah, well, we're glad that you're helping to shepherd the people. We appreciate Thanks. that. All right. Again, Brother Steve Fulmer of the Covenant Church, very glad that he's joined us. And that will do it for this self-help segment. Don't go anywhere. A lot more local programming when we continue.